Okay, so back to the main result of the CAPM. The expected risk premium for some stock I, which is its return minus the risk free, equals the expected risk premium for the market, the market's return minus the risk free, multiplied by this beta. So note that if beta is greater than one, the stock is expected to earn more than the market. The expected return of the stock is greater than the expected return of the market. If beta equals one, then these two are the same and the expected returns are equal. And if beta is less than one, then the expected return is less than the market's return. Oops, I have a typo there. Less than the market's return. And we can see this fairly uh, simply mathematically, which means that beta is measuring essentially the portion of market risk that is held by a stock. Now note that there is no idiosyncratic component here. You do not earn the market risk premium times beta plus something for the idiosyncratic component, you just get the market risk component. Now we usually write it this way to leave just the expected return on the left side so that I have the expected return of the stock is equal to the risk free plus this market risk premium times this beta. And note there's nothing else here. You don't get added to this. You don't get the idiosyncratic component. So the capital asset pricing model says you are only compensated for market risk. You are not compensated for non-market risk because non-market or idiosyncratic risk can be eliminated in a diversified portfolio and diversification is free. So let's just talk through this very quickly. Assume two people are both interested in the same stock and the first person will hold the stock all by itself. They're going to hold just that particular stock. But person two will hold the stock as part of a well-diversified portfolio. Since person one, since they're holding it just single stock, they're going to incur both market risk and idiosyncratic risk. And therefore, person one needs to earn more from holding the stock than person two. Since person two will only incur market risk because they're going to hold it as part of a well-diversified portfolio, they are willing to earn less. So therefore, since person two is willing to earn less on the stock, they will pay more for the stock. And so the stock's price will reflect the most that people are willing to pay. It will reflect person two's price, not person one's price. And so stocks will be priced for people who are willing to hold stocks as part of a well-diversified portfolio. Therefore, since diversification eliminates idiosyncratic risk, you are not compensated for the idiosyncratic component. And so therefore the CAPM says that stocks are priced to compensate people only for incurring market risk, not total risk. So even if a single person does not diversify, others will. And so the stocks will be priced for them. And the amount of the compensation that you receive is a function of the capital asset pricing model beta. So how do we calculate beta? How is beta calculated? Well, we're going to do an ordinary least squares regression. Uh, this is the regression model. We're going to estimate alpha and beta by, falling, by finding the smallest number of random errors. Alpha becomes this intercept. Sometimes this is referred to as uh, Jensen's alpha. And there's this website Seeking Alpha that sort of refers to this. Uh, this concept of an alpha and later on we'll see that after compensating for risk if there is any alpha this is my risk adjusted excess return the beta is the slope coefficient and it's the relationship between the stock and the market so let me do a quick drawing and then we'll go to a spreadsheet and look at some data <laughs> 